you're at the bedside, the monitor's screaming, heart rate 186, your EKG machine spits out atrial fibrillation with RVR, possible MI. But can you trust it? If you're a nurse, especially new to telemetry or critical care, this moment feels like a gut punch. But don't panic. Today, I'm going to unpack what your EKG machine gets right, what it often gets wrong, and how to quickly tell the difference between a fib, a flutter, and a STEMI before the provider even arrives. Let's start with the basics, your EKG machine. It's a helpful tool, but it's not a clinician. Here's a quick reality check on those algorithm numbers. Sinus rhythm, pretty reliable, about 95 to 98% accurate. Atrial fibrillation, 90 to 95%, still decent, but not bulletproof. STEMI, the sensitivity drops, about 70 to 85%. That means it actually misses some. And for stuff like LVH, bundle branch blocks, or pacer rhythms, only moderately reliable, QTC, decent, as long as the tracing isn't a hot mess of artifact. Bottom line, machines help. But your eyes, your clinical judgment, and your ability to spot patterns are the true decision makers at the bedside. Now let's get into AFib, the wild card rhythm. It's pure chaos, born in the left atrium. Think about patients with high pressure or stretched out atria hypertension, congestive heart failure, mitral valve disease. When the left atrial volume index is over 48 milliliters per square meter or the diameter is over 5 centimeters, good luck with cardioversion. The atrium's just stubborn at that point, both electrically and mechanically. Why does it matter? Because AFib means a higher risk of stroke. These patients usually need anticoagulation and always need rate control. Think metaprolol or cardizem, digoxin or amiodarone. So if you see AFib with RVR and your patient is symptomatic, maybe hypertensive, maybe lightheaded or having chest pain, call the provider. Fast. Let's pivot to A-flutter. It looks pretty, but it can act ugly. Usually comes from the right atrium, doing laps around the tricuspid annulus. On the strip, you'll see that classic sawtooth pattern, regular fast atrial activity. Unlike AFib, it's regular. But don't get too comfy, it can flip into AFib. And if the ventricular response is rapid, you still need to control that rate. What about anticoagulation? Not always needed, but if the flutter is sustained or your patient's got stroke risk factors, think CHA2DS2 VASC score, that's a call to the provider. All right, let's talk STEMI, or not. The EKG machine flashes possible STEMI, now what? If you see ST elevation in two contiguous leads and reciprocal changes, especially with chest pain, assume the worst and act fast. But remember, the machine overcalls STEMI. It's a safety net, not a final answer. Look for these clues. ST elevation with a convex shape, reciprocal ST depression, T-wave inversion, and big one. Does it match the troponin trend and symptoms? So when should you be on that phone immediately? Here's my shortlist. New AFib with RVR over 150. Runs of wide complex tachycardia, think possible VT. Any irregular rhythm with hypertension, altered mental status or chest pain. And of course, any STEMI pattern or serious concern, even if the machine seems unsure. Your clinical judgment is stronger than any machine. You're not just reading strips, you're saving lives. Every click, every call, every heartbeat you recognize matters. The machine, it's just the first line. You are the front line.